Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dialogue One on One. I'm your host, Liam Shea, and today we have an amazing interview with our wonderful guest, Donovan McKenzie. Donovan is the founder of Heart of a Man Foundation, an organization that aims to bring awareness and support to men who may be suffering from mental health struggles. Donovan is here today to talk about the appearance he'll be making at a George Brown panel for Black History Month, or as George Brown is calling it this year, Black Futures Month, his work with Heart of a Man, and just to bring more awareness to men's health in general. Thank you so much for joining us, Donovan. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, So I guess just to start everything off, kick it off, uh, just as the founder of Heart of a Man, uh, would you tell us where you got the inspiration uh, to start the foundation? as well as uh, just who you are. Who is Donovan McKenzie? The Heart of a Man uh, actually came from um, my own personal journey. Um, Mental health is something I never believed in as a man. In fact, I didn't believe men really need to get help. I was actually taught, and I believe that men are strong enough to do it on their own. Um, And I didn't really believe in, you know, men use sharing what's in their hearts to get help being open you know um and what society calls it vulnerable vulnerable Mm -hmm. i didn't believe that stuff right um i myself was diagnosed with depression when i was younger 21 but i kind of laughed it off brushed it off because it's not something i learned about i was like depression what are you talking about? Yes, I stay in my basement. Yes, I feel down and out a lot of times, but it doesn't mean I'm depressed. I don't believe in that stuff. Mm-hmm. But what happened moving forward in my life is I had some tragedies that occurred and I lost my mother to cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, thank you. Um, that broke my heart, but also my spirit was crushed. And that depression that I kept hidden started to take root even more in my life. I was like, wow, I am depressed. I'm feeling broken. Um, Really didn't want to get out of bed. I felt lost Um, and I didn't know what to do. I was like, what is this I'm feeling? Why don't I want to do anything? Why does my heart feel so heavy as a man? But my inspiration did come when I said to myself, I'm going to radically accept um, what's happening and I'm gonna go seek help. And I got some help from a therapist who then I was diagnosed with depression and I accepted it again. No, this time I accepted it. Last time I didn't. I accepted what was going on and I decided to get the help I needed, um, which gave me this vision to help other men because I had to ask myself, um, how are other men overcoming this battle they face? Because we're told that, you know, this is something that we don't have to with some that men don't, men men are strong enough to overcome this. Men are strong enough to deal with this. Um, But really and truly, if you look at the rates, the suicide rates are even higher with men, higher with men. It's increased. Um, Depression is something we keep quiet about. We don't really feel comfortable a lot of times to share what's going on because society tells us to keep it to ourselves, really and truly, which is sad. Um, So I decided to really start sharing my story and also trying my best to help other men share their stories and get the help need. So I called it heart of a man because men have a lot of heaviness in their heart that we don't share. I myself had a lot of heaviness and I, from researching and speaking to other men, they go through a lot of the same things I was going through. So I said, why not just start a movement and uh, hopefully one day an organization that could help men get the help they need for their mental battles and to feel comfortable sharing so um that's that's been my journey and that's really my story and that's why i'm still here um i'm still gonna overcome and i'm still gonna elevate my mind and i'm gonna try to inspire others no that was you know very beautifully said um i love the name heart of a man especially as now you clarified it's like to bring out the heaviness in your heart um and as you know as someone else you know as a man myself and who struggles for mental illness i definitely get where you're coming from on the sense of it's, you know, it's hard to, you know, share what you're feeling inside because sometimes you're just taught that, you know, you have to keep it in. You have to be, you know, strong and tough. But, you know, as, you know, we're in the year 2022, it's time for men to realize that, like, you know, those gendered norms aren't what, you know, they aren't around anymore. You can you can express yourself and really feel like make sure people understand how you're feeling. Yes, you um, said it right. 
make sure people understand how you're feeling, which is not very easy for men. Yeah. And I'm not knock men for still feeling that way because society has put it on us a lot that when we share, we are weak and we are not strong. And men are supposed to keep things inside and be that strong warrior that society tells us to be. Right. No, yeah, I agree. Um, so I guess, so since you've been working as a mental health advocate for men for a couple years now, uh, just in terms of support and awareness have men been getting through like have what have you experienced in terms of support have you seen that men have gotten and what's out there for them um to be very honest with you there aren't many uh support systems or even a lot of resources for men um in my past experience from what i've experienced myself personally and what i've heard from other men um, because like I said, there's so much stigma behind all, um, mental health itself all over, but men don't receive as much resources. This is what I have come to realize, but this year I've been doing some research and things are growing. Men are getting more help. Now it's starting to grow. It's not taken off yet. Yes. We can go to CAMH. Yes. We can go to CMHA in different places like that, large organizations, but I there needs to be more organizations now. And that's what I would like. I'm trying my best to find ways to build that for tailored to helping men in particular. There's right. something called as a friend, I have Mike Stroh, who has something called starts with me that helps men and women, but he is a man that's been through a journey and, mm -hmm. um, and his organization to grow. And it's been, it's been helpful even to me. Um, also, there's another website. It's called headsupguys.org, I believe. Okay. Um, that tackles what men face, mental issues men face, depression, anxiety. There are things like that that I just want to grow. So what's happening now is things are growing, but it's not there yet. And we just need to build things more for men, tailored to men, that men could feel comfortable, open up, and sharing what's going on inside and allowing their heart to say, you know what? Okay, yes, there's stigma behind it. Yes, you know, I might get shunned, but at the same time, I still want to live, whether for my family, whether for my girlfriend, whether for my friends, I just want to still be around. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get the help. So now outside support needs to grow for men, and that's why I created Heart of a Man. And I pray and I hope that this year, as we can see the numbers rising with suicide cases with men, people say, you know what, let's help men even more now it's time so that's what i have to say about that yeah no uh definitely i if you're watching this and you're you know you're struggling with mental health issues as a man please check out the you know the resources that uh, donovan just mentioned uh they're sure to give you a great insight as well as check out heart of a man obviously um, um so i guess on to the next so this you know february uh You'll be speaking at George Brown's Black Futures Month. Uh, yes. You'll be speaking at the panel for mental health, racism, and uh, the workplace. Any yes. chance we could just get like a sneak peek at what you will be saying uh, during these panels and just what you're hoping the students and staff will take away from your words? Well, one, I'm going to share my story. I'm going to share how this this black man in, during Black History Month mm -hmm. um, has dealt with and fought mental health and overcome so much battles, so much um, setbacks in my life. I'm going to share what I did because when you share your story, people get inspired, right? When they know that, Hey, this, someone overcame this man, maybe I could too. Maybe I could share with a, a friend that's going through it. And I'm also going to teach the ways I've learned how to overcome it and what it meant for me and what, what, uh, and this, and this, the strategies I've taken to really cope with it throughout my life. All right. Awesome. what i'm gonna do more than it. it's it's i'm looking forward to it i'll be honest i'm a little bit nervous <laughs> uh, well just, i mean uh, from what i've heard your story so far it's really fascinating so i'm sure everyone will love it um i really appreciate that man I no really problem so that's a sneak peek into it a sneak um, <laughs> well thank you it's a great scoop for me um <laughs> so i kind of want to go back because you were talking about how there is a stigma around men's mental health in general um, and I kind of just want to touch up on you as a black man growing up in a black community. Um, mm -hmm. 
do you feel that maybe there is even more of a stigma that it's harder for you as a black man to come out and talk about your mental struggles or just any type of, you know, mental health issues you may be having? And just some advice to our other black students who may, you know, want to come out and talk about them, but just don't know how. There, it's still hard to come out. Um, and when we, like I said, in my community, if we gain knowledge is when we were young and our parents taught us this and, you know, we learned this in our, in our school system or whatever, mm -hmm. um, it'd be a lot easier to come out and talk about it. There's still a lot of stigma around it, but I believe we are now taking more steps um, to really open up and be more vulnerable, be more supportive towards it. It's small steps. Nothing huge has happened yet. You know, just like the racial tension and things that's happened, George Floyd, how many things that's, how many things that's happened in the United States, things are opening up. We're, we're getting there, but we're not there yet. Um, we're not there yet. We need uh, more resources for young black people to get yeah. help with mental health. Um, we need uh, definitely more support. We need our entire, we need the government to know, hey, you know what, black men and women are going through mental health issues. And sometimes they might not want to talk about it. What we need to let them know they're important, they're special, and they deserve the help they need. They deserve to be comforted, they deserve to be educated, they deserve to be, to feel like they are important enough to get the support of mental health. Yeah. And then our community itself, when we get that confidence, I believe over time, maybe after I, I pass, while well, I'm leaving this, planting these seeds, but things will change even more. There's a saying, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. Kevin Durant said this when he won the championship of Boston Celtics right. in 2008. He said, anything is possible, anything <laughs> is possible. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. And for the viewers who are listening, if you are struggling with something like this, please take Donovan's word to heart that you're not alone in this. And there is someone out there to listen to you. Uh, and like he was saying, like, yeah, George Brown does have a lot of resources, uh, be it the mental health uh, counselors that will listen to you if you need someone to talk to, or even the Black Student, uh, Black Student Network, Success Network. They'll listen to you as well, and they'll make sure that you succeed. Uh, don't keep it inside, you know, please. Get the help you need. So it was a bit of a heavy conversation. Uh, a lot of a lot of great stuff was spoken about, and I think hopefully we brought awareness to a larger group of people, and hopefully now men are gonna go out and like get the help that they need. Um, so I like to finish it off. I like letting uh, our, my guest plug any of any of their uh, social media or any projects they're up to. Kind of like what are the what's going on with them, and just a uh, little free self promotion. So uh, what are you up to? <laughs> I really appreciate that, man. Um, I'm rebuilding my website right now. I just feel like there's some things that need to be changed. Um, right. I would like to have more opportunities to speak and share my story and try to encourage um, men and women um, to really know that know their purpose, know they're not alone. Um, so my website's being rebuilt. Um, so please visit heartofaman.com. You can visit it now. It is up and running. If you'd like to send me an email, info at heartofaman.com, please feel free to um, drop me a line. Um, I'm here for you. Uh, my social media uh, needs some work, but still there. Heart of a man underscore. Check it out. Um, so drop, drop me a line again, you know. There's some things I've said, there's some quotes I've um, posted that I feel can really inspire. Even if I'm just touching one person, that's more than zero. That's I don't need to touch millions. I don't need to touch thousands. I thought that before, but one person. Mm -hmm. Look at, check it out, Heart of a Man underscore. And um, YouTube is being built too, Heart of a Man. Okay. There's now another resource, there's, not, there's another organization called um, heartofaman.org, which is still good. Um, it touches on a lot of biblical stuff. Um, but if you don't find me, mine's just heartofaman.com. Dot com. Dot com. Right? Okay. Yes, dot com. And my Twitter is at the heart of a man. At the heart of a man. Yeah. So awesome. check me out. Well, and, we'll uh, be sure to link all of that. Uh, make sure everyone can access you somehow. Uh, <laughs> well, again, thank you for coming by. It was a great conversation. I learned a lot. And I hope 
you know, we were able to provide resources for men out there who need it. Yes, I, I really, I really hope we can. Um, one step at a time. You guys are not alone. I know COVID's been tough, but you're not alone. Yeah, and like you said, all we have to do is just reach one person, yeah. and we're saving one life. One Anyone line. gay guys, thank you so much for coming out to Dialogue One on One. I was your host, Liam Shea. Again, thank you, Donna, for being here. Uh, and I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great one.